In this video, I'm going to go over how to create realistic fire effects, just like you see right here inside Adobe Photoshop. The only real catch is that you'll need Adobe Photoshop CC 2014 or newer in order to do this, since this is a pretty new feature that I actually just found out about. And this is actually super easy to do since it's just using a filter to create these flames. And the filter is under filter and then render. And then up at the top here, there's an option for flame. So I'm going to go over how you can actually do this and the settings I used to create this particular piece. And I'll show you a few tips and tricks I learned along the way. So here's this file where I just have this word typed out right here. So we can start to recreate at least something kind of similar to what I have right here. This particular font is called Gandhi Sans and it's a free font on Font Squirrel. And I'll place a link for that in the description. So if you want to use this exact font, you can feel free to do that. Or you can use whatever font or image you think will work best. So the first thing you got to know in order to do this is that each flame, when I look at these flames right here, they're a pen tool pad. So you have to draw those paths and then when you do that the flames will be applied to them So here's how you go ahead and do that So right here I have my type on its own layer and my background on its own layer So you can change these whenever you want to but I'm going to create a new layer by hitting this page button at the bottom right here To create a new layer and it's important that you have an empty layer here selected because wherever you render these flames It'll apply so if you apply them right over your type or image or whatever it is They will become part of that layer and you can edit them separately And that's kind of something that makes it a little bit more difficult to create stuff So just make sure you're on your own layer and then under paths right now if I click on that tab there aren't any paths so we're going to create some. So I'm going to hit P on my keyboard or you can use the pen tool on your toolbar right here. P is just a shortcut to bring up a pen tool and we're going to draw in some paths. So some things to kind of keep note of here. I found it looks the best when you actually make your path look like it's following the same general idea of the letters or the object that you're doing this on. And also, for example, paths like this that have a very strong bend tend to have some really weird side effects that don't look too good. It kind of makes it look a bit more fake. So really gentle sloping lines tend to work the best here. So just click, drag and hold and let go when you think the path looks good. And then to draw the next path, you can either just go ahead and click it like that. When you do it, it'll just automatically bring this bend. But if you want it to be a little bit more custom, you can hold Alt or Option and then click on this point, which will remove the auto bend. And then you can just go ahead and add your own bend without the automatic bending in there. That's how I personally tend to work, but you can feel free to work however you think works best for you. And one other thing to think of here, so that this pen path right here doesn't keep just drawing on the same path over and over again, I just hop over to the path window right here and then click off this work path and then click back on it, which allows me to start a brand new path that's not part of this old one. So I'm gonna do that for all these different letters here pretty quickly. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time making sure these look really good. I just wanna give a pretty good base demonstration of how this works. And once again, once you're done with the path and you wanna start a new one, just click off this work path on this little area below it right here and then click back on it and you can start drawing again when you have the pen tool selected. And do remember to keep these paths kind of nice and subtle and sloping so that there aren't any weird harsh edges. It'll just look better when you go ahead and do it that way. So here's the last one I'm gonna do. And then later on we can do ones for behind the letters too so you can get a little bit of a more 3D effect going on when you actually go in here and do this but this should be good to demonstrate right here. So when you apply this flame render, you wanna make sure your work path where these lines you just drew are. And you also wanna make sure that you're selected on this blank layer. So when the path is selected, and you can tell that because these paths are currently visible on my screen right here. And on this new layer, I'll just double click on the type right here and write flame. So in the future, I know what is on that layer. Then I go to filter, and then near the middle here, there's an option for render, and we wanna render a flame. So now a dialog box will appear. It might take a little while for it to load because this is actually a pretty intensive process. I'm just gonna go back to the default preset right here so you can see how it will look when you actually open this up for the first time. And I did forget to mention something else too. My document size is 800 by 1000 pixels. So if you wanna do this exactly the same way I am, working with a similar document size should lead to relatively similar results. So here's how these flames look by default. As you can tell, they don't look super great. This probably isn't something that you'd wanna go ahead and use. To change this, it's actually pretty easy. Under flame type, we're gonna click on that. And then in this menu that appears right here, we're gonna select number one, which is one flame along path. It'll take a second for this to actually apply, and when it does, here's the end result. So we're looking a little bit better here. Under width, I'm just gonna reduce this a tiny little bit and type in 64. Not a huge change, but it will affect how this looks just a little bit. Once this applies, we can go to flame lines complexity. I'm gonna leave that at 10. Under turbulent, I'm gonna increase this quite a bit to 60. And turbulent is basically how much waviness or rippliness the flames have. You can think of it like there's a a wind blowing on the flame. It gives it this nice natural kind of arcing pattern to it. Under Jag, I'm gonna leave that at zero. Under Opacity, it's just the opacity of the flame. So when you increase this number, they'll appear a little bit brighter. I notice when I do 25, they're pretty transparent. So I just bump it up to 50. And I'll let this go ahead and render right here. Under Flat Bottom Alignment, I'm gonna leave that at 30. 
and then flame styles i'm going to leave that at normal but there are different options in here from normal to violent to flat flat is almost like 2d overlapping subtle gradients it's kind of a neat look but i think normal is the most realistic and you can also change the way the flames go up in shape when you click on the flame shape so i'm gonna leave this at parallel since it tends to look really good for what i'm doing right here but you can feel free to experiment with that and kind of change that up as you see fit and then quality by default, it's set to medium, but I'm gonna actually change this up to high. It is worth noting though, is that this is a very intensive process. So if you select something like fine, which is what I would do if I was doing this for something professionally, it'll go quite a bit slower when it actually goes in here and renders everything. So if you're just trying to get a rough feel for how things will look, you can leave it on medium or even bring it up to high. If you're on a slower machine, I'd recommend medium or lower, unless you have quite a bit of time where you can go ahead and just let it sit and render. And also the larger the document size, the longer this will take. But I'm just gonna hit OK here so these can apply and then you can see how these look. This is gonna go relatively quickly here because this isn't a very large document. Once this is done here, I'm gonna draw some more lines to do the flames on the back of these letters right here. I'll do that very quickly. So right here we have our flames. We can still see those paths we drew. So I'm actually gonna go to my path toolbar right here and just click off this work path so you can see how these flames look on their own. So this is a pretty good starting point. And I'm actually gonna very quickly just create a new layer like we did before by hitting this new layer button at the bottom. And I'm gonna drag it behind the type because these flames can be shown behind these letters to give this a bit more of a 3D effect. So with this new layer selected, I'm gonna hit P on my keyboard to bring up a pen tool. It's right here in my toolbar if you wanna select it that way. And then I'm gonna draw some new paths in here. So behind this R, I'm gonna do a very subtle kind of sloping flame right here in the background. I'm just gonna to try to give it a kind of a neat look right here. And I'm also going to do it behind this E. So I'm gonna click off this path and then I'm gonna click back on that path so it's selected once again. And then I'm going to draw another flame behind this E. So I'm gonna start right here on the foot of this E and just do kind of a small one right here. I'm actually gonna leave it just like this since I think this might look kind of cool when I actually render it. So with that new blank layer selected, I'm gonna go back up to filter and then render and then flame. Or if you've already done the first step before, you can just hit flame and it'll actually render all those same settings once again. So I'm just gonna do that. So it's gonna use the exact same settings I used previously, which is what I wanna do because I want these to match what I did previously. So right there, it rendered in these new flames, and this is the end result. Once again, I'm gonna click to my pass window and just click off this new work path so I don't see those paths on here, and we can get a better look at the flames. So I'm gonna double click on this flame layer in the background here and just name it Background Flames. So that way, if I go back into this document at a later time, I know what I'm dealing with. And under blend mode for this first flame right here, I've actually played around with this a little bit to give this a little bit of a different look. Like I think this result looks pretty good as it is. It doesn't need to be changed, but I found that using hard light gives it a kind of interesting look. Basically it makes the parts of the flame that overlap on these black letters right here have a very deep orange or red appearance to them. So it adds a little bit more of a variance that I think looks pretty cool. And I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing for these background flames. It is worth noting though, that if you change the color of your type, like this isn't a pure black, it's kind of a very dark gray. If I make this fire type, I'm just gonna zoom in here so you can see it a little bit better. You can tell that it does change the appearance of this flame right here. So when you use a blending mode, it will have an effect on that. Like if I make it white right here, these become almost transparent because that's just the way this particular blending mode works. You can play around with all the different blending mode types and see which ones you think work the best for what you're doing, or you can go ahead and just leave it normal as well. I think it looks just fine like that if you want to do that. And then a couple final finishing touches here. Like this is basically done as far as I'm concerned, but I found that I liked desaturating these flames just a little bit. I think the effect looks a little bit more natural when these flames are slightly desaturated. So I'm going to hit control U on a PC or command U on a Mac to bring up hue saturation. Now I'm just going to keep bumping down this saturation right here until I think the flames have a little bit more subtle and natural appearance. Like I think this is looking pretty good. And I'm going to do the same thing for the background flames. I just try to use my eye and figure out what I think looks best. It doesn't really matter a whole bunch how desaturated or saturated you make these. It's really personal preference when it comes to that. But feel free to play around with that and kind of keep adjusting the settings until you get something that you really think looks good. And then as one very final stage here, I found that I like adding a little bit of Gaussian blur to the backgrounds of these flames right here, just to give this kind of a neat fiery glow. And to do that, I'm just going to duplicate both these layers, this flame and then background flames. And to do that very, very quickly, on a PC, you can hit Control J, which duplicates that layer. Or on a Mac, you can hit Command J, and that'll just duplicate whatever layer is selected. And then with these copies, this flame copy and background flame copies, I'm just gonna drag and hold and then bring them to the very background right here. So now these two copied layers are on the bottom of my layer palette just above the background color right here. So I'm gonna select both of those by clicking on one, holding Shift, and then clicking the other. And then I'm gonna right click on those layers, and I'm going to select Merge Layers right here. So these are both now on the same layer. I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit so you can see we're doing a little bit better here. This is at 200%, so it might not look too sharp. But I'm gonna change the opacity right here to, let's say 15%, something pretty small, so these don't look too overbearing. And then I'm gonna go to Filter, and then Blur, and then Gaussian Blur. 
I'm just going to add a little bit of blur here. 6.6 .6 seems to work pretty well, maybe even something like 7.2. You can kind of play around with it and see what you think looks the best. But now if I zoom out here and then turn on and off this background layer, it's a very subtle effect. Maybe I should zoom back in. But if you look at the very outsides of these flames right here, it just looks like a very subtle glow that I think gives us a slightly more natural appearance. And then I can go ahead and just rename this flame copy by double clicking it and rename it flame background blur. A little bit of typo there, but that's cool for this video. But there you have it, pretty realistic flame effects that are actually really quick and easy to do. Once you do it one time, you can go back in at a later time and do it very quickly. I don't know how I would use these in a lot of professional projects, but if you ever find yourself needing to add at least somewhat realistic flames or something, this is a really cool option to do it. And it is super customizable because you can just draw it along the paths. So I think that's a really cool part of this that you can create really realistic flames very quickly and very easily inside Photoshop now with this new feature. But that's it for this video. If you liked it, please leave a comment, a like, and favorite. And if you wanna see stuff like this every week, please subscribe. I do my best to keep useful content just like this coming every week. Thanks so much for watching.